Hey, lad. I've been playing standard with the goal of getting to a 10 star bonus. Currently, when I started, I, I have a 5 star bonus. The reason is, if I ever want to play standard games, I kind of want to uh, get to legend uh, at a, in a timely fashion. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting the time in to get to either diamond or legend so I can have an easier time every month of it. Uh, but the deck I've chosen to play is Burgle Rogue because obviously it's uh, you can have a lot of different outcomes of that due to the card generation. Uh, this game, I've commented over the top of it because I was playing music. The game was so good. I thought I'd salvage it because the uh, the end game finisher was a, a unique card generated masterpiece. So uh, enjoy. Uh, it's only one game. Uh, I'll I'll be playing a bit of standard on stream, but mainly, obviously, still playing wild. I'm just doing it to get to my bonus. You alright, lad? Gonna do another commentary video because this had music playing and the game was so good that uh, I thought I'd salvage it. Uh, playing standard, as I mentioned. The reason I've already mentioned, I just want to gain 10 stars, so it's easier if I ever want to play it again. Uh, playing Burgle Rogue, because uh, that is like a unique outcome every game, because you've got cards that generate cards from different classes, so at least the, the game feels uh, different each time you play it. Obviously, the win condition is usually the same. You want to charge in Edwin with uh, Smite, or you get there with some Burn. Uh, and the early game is usually the same. You look for Null. Uh, I think you look for Passage, Secret Passage as well. And the free mana, free free guy that copies himself. I had a tradable there. That, that hand's not great, but um, luckily I hit a spell off the tradable. So I still got the reduction on it. My next play would probably be uh, Pirate and uh, One Thief, just to generate a card. Also, I don't exactly know what my opponents are going to be playing. Uh, that's because I've only played like 10 games of standard. So I only have like a... I have limited knowledge of what I'm up against. I assume this is free Shaman, but I don't know yet. Uh, here I'm just debating whether to do Passage now. Because I, mean, I could Passage and get a tradable card. I could Passage and get a Null. Uh, those are my two options. I don't really want to just sit on this hand because right now it's, uh, it's not great. I want to try and uh, generate something or get something on board, a threat. I'm going to pick Orb here. It was either, it was either Orb or Cram Session, but I chose Orb just to regenerate another card. Uh, the good thing about Passaging here is now the Nulls cost zero, so when I do top deck them or if I play Edwin, I have a good chance of getting a zero mana card off it. Uh, so my opponent played the Freeze. I'm going to trade out my card, and here I'm just going to play uh, Orb on the Freeze minion. Uh, I'm going to take another tradable. It was either Yonk or tradable, uh, uh, but I figured looking for more cards in my deck is uh, is preferable at this point because my hand, again, is still not great. Uh, you'll have to let me know in the comment section what is the most popular Shaman deck in Standard right now because I, I just assumed it was Freeze. Um, right, I guess there's like a couple of Shaman decks. Uh, here we've got the uh, Null. So now it's zero because I passaged and drew four cards before. Here I'm just going to try fill up the board with some uh, some presents because I want to start uh, dealing some damage to this guy. Because if, if it is free shaman on turn six, I can assume my board's going to get frozen uh, at least twice. Because you'll he'll, he'll probably have parrot at, at that point as well. Uh, pick up evocation here just to generate some value. Uh, the fun thing about evocation is if I evocation and then play the other passage... Uh, I can then um, keep those mage cards in hand because what happens is you play Evocation, you Passage, swap the hand out and when the hand comes back those cards are permanently there. Uh, but that was a good time for us. I managed to cycle out uh, a couple of cards and I found the second Null. So we got some good board presence. He obviously freezes one from the uh, Elemental before. Uh, I guess these guys are running one Thief because it it could give them another freeze. I imagine that's why they're doing it. Uh, the revolve though off the one thief is a little bit annoying. Uh, I'm just looking at the cards thinking do I want to shadow step any of these? Uh, and the answer is no. <laughs> um, I I had it in my head. I could shadow step the, uh, the pirate from hand and if he played a freeze elemental. I could uh, shadow step it and replay it and steal some of the stats from the uh, freeze elemental. Uh, 
I don't really want to extort that minion. I kind of want to uh, trade out again and look for a better card. Um, and I also want to empty my hand a little bit so Evocation um, gets a little bit of extra value later on. So I just choose to uh, trade, keep the board wide and go for it. Uh, I know by doing this uh, it makes his freeze elemental a lot better, but now I have scabs and I've still got that shadow step for the pirate. So coin six drop, I thought he was going to coin freeze, but he actually coins out the, uh, I forget what that's called, is it like a lurker or something like that? I'm not up to date with like all the names on every card. Is it lurker below? Let me know, because <laughs> I'm not checking it. <laughs> uh, so here, I, I'm just going to start with the uh, card generation. Uh, and then I pick up a mind render, and this is where the game uh, takes a interesting turn. Uh, so with mind render, I figure that uh, I have shadow step, so if it sticks on board, I can take his hand again. Uh, and I'm a little think about what to do in this scenario. Uh, so I, I think I just end up uh, killing that off with the wicked stab, hero power, and, and then passing. Because uh, what I want to do is I want to play uh, Scabs, so I get the uh, basically the prep from the Hero Power. And then I, what I was planning on doing is prepping the Evocation and stealing his hand. Uh, because like Secret Passage, if you play Evocation and then you play Mind Render, you keep those cards. So I figured if I'm going to get frozen out this game, I can try win with some uh, Mage Spells or some value. Uh, rather than with minions. So our opponent doesn't draw a nature spell, it's another uh, another freeze uh, and card draw. So uh, at this point I'm just wondering what he's got. So that's the second one maker card. Uh, here I just go with the scabs and then I believe I just hear a power and replay the pirate at this stage. And it, it I'm thinking, ah, oh, this is going to be good now. Like, look, look, there's some unique possibilities there. Rune is also good. Take out any of his large minions while I keep my board. But I'm thinking there now, I've generated two solid legendaries there that could close out the game. I've not done much chip damage to him, which I would have liked to have done more because obviously like Snowfall Guardian now drops. So trade out first, see what it is. Get a Tenwu. And then a uh, Death. Of this face, I think I just bounce. I play Tenwu now, actually. I bounce back the pirate and generate another card, and that just gives me a bit more uh, board presence. So, as you can see, I, I hit like a lot of good generated cards this game. Maybe not that one, that one's not so good, but so I've actually got my hand size down to four. I get dunk tanked here. I still don't know what's going on yet, but because uh, obviously this is an OTK shaman, but I still I, I haven't figured that out because I don't know they exist basically. <laughs> but this is an OTK shaman that with uh, Yasaraj, the, the new one. Uh, so I go with my original game plan now. I prep it, check what I've got, and then mine render. And this is where things get. Very interesting. I get to see what he's got in his hand. Oh my god. Oh go sweet Jesus. Balnar. <laughs> uh, double ramp. And. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, mutinous. But when I play this mutinous. Uh, I re-steal his hand. Because uh, the first battle cry I played was. Da -da -da -da, mind render. Uh, unfortunately, I ate, I ate his lowest cost card, and I acted a bit too quickly there. Uh, if I had, if I didn't eat his small elemental, uh, then I would have, uh, I would have actually uh, been able to mutinous another card because I could have uh, ramped and then played the small elemental, and then mine rendered his hand again. Uh, but unfortunately, no, that didn't happen. I uh, was a bit hasty there. Uh, so I just use this dunk tank. Um, overloaded quite a lot, as you can tell. Uh, but it turns out, uh, next turn I only need uh, two mana. <laughs> Interestingly enough. So we see what his hand is. It's uh, dunk. 
It is Mutinous, Balmar. Uh, so that's where he's rocking right now. He's also got the Freeze Elemental. Uh, and 9 mana to play with. So he probably at this stage wants to corrupt his dunk tank. I don't think that was corrupted. So he, he does it there with the Freeze. And he probably knows uh, Mutinous is not going to get too much value against me. So uh, my hand is mainly spells. Uh, and so 2 mana I've got. But look at this, right? I have double Shadow Step. Uh, even with just two mana, because I know he's just top decked a card, I'm going to try it again. So I actually shadow step both back now uh, and figure about uh, the mana cost. And uh, here I'm just going to prep the mine render. Probably didn't need to prep the mine render actually. I could have prepped the card afterwards. Uh, but as you can see now, he did top deck a battle cry that was below uh, four mana and below. That's all I needed. Actually, six mana battle cry would have done it. Uh, and the battle cry is uh, part of his combo, which he corrupted. So now, every time I play this, this is basically the Asarage combo, right? Whenever a battle cry is played, uh, I'm swapping the hand out and I'm basically just hitting them in the face of it. Uh, th the only problem is uh, board space. Uh, that's the only issue. I could have actually uh, dunk tanked maybe one of my own minions so I could play other stuff but I would I don't have the mana for that actually yeah I wouldn't have had the mana for that uh, but here and now we know what he's got he's got no freezers he's only got Balnar and a couple of combo pieces so the only way he can beat me is if he top decks uh, uh, Yasiraj I think it is that's the only way he can beat me but isn't that isn't that, isn't that insane <laughs> they like even with two mana, I'm, I'm overloaded 28 mana there, by the way. Even with just two mana, luckily I got the other shadow step. But I think even without, I could have prepped a card and still done that. I only needed two mana. I would have I had to have shadow step back the... Uh... I, I didn't even need to shadow step the ball now, really, did I? That was unnecessary, thinking about it. Actually, when I did shadow step the ball now, I think I thought I was going to do it next turn, and then I immediately changed my mind. Because I knew we had four mana in hand. I think that's where it was, but... Yeah, well, Barnard cost zero anyway, so it wouldn't really matter too much. Thinking about it now. Like, reviewing that. Uh, but I know now we've won, because that was his top deck, right? And he has no card draw off it. So all he has is Dunk uh, and one of the Medics. And that's not going to clear enough damage off, unfortunately. Uh, so we can do two copies of it. And the first Battle Cry he played... Uh, wasn't enough because it doesn't do anything so yeah there you go that, that's uh... <laughs> that's one of the reasons like uh... I'm enjoying playing standard at the minute I, I, I'm enjoying playing wild as well don't get me wrong but the goal is to get to either legend or diamond because I want to get the 10 star bonus why don't you check them videos out there? They look alright.